All right, is that better? Is that better? I see 59 of you. Oh, oh sorry. I see 59 of you in here. I'm going to have to set this. Hello. <laughs> Thank God I had this plugged up, right? Um, there we go. Well, no, that's not going to work either. Okay. Hi, Sheila Cushionberry. <laughs> Okay, yes, Fawn of the Fox again. Again, again. Alright, Jane Sublet, I just saw you ask a question about the Top Stitch brand needles. That is the needles you want to use. You want to use Top Stitch. Alright? Why? Why do we want to? Whoa, we don't want to zoom in. We darn sure don't want to do that. Ooh, child, no. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Sonya Jones, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Um, do you get those needles? Miss Terry Ponce Jane, here, do you get those needles? Regina Young, when using metallic thread, is there a specific needles to use? Yes. Same needle. Top stitch. Top stitch needle. Same needle. I'm trying to tell y'all, it's very, very simple. Very, very simple. And to even concrete this further... I'm letting you know that this information is coming to you secondhand. All right. This is not some revelation that I came to on my own. This is information that was taught to me by a thread company. And as soon as this is over, I will be linking you guys to that video so that you can see for yourself that this is not just coming from me. And who better would know how to direct you to what needles you would use than a thread company, right? Because they want uh, you to use the best thing for the thread. That only makes sense. Um, Hang on, you guys. Let me set this here. Sorry, that, that was my bad. I turned the phone off and that was retarded. All right, so jump over to the other video. To the mobile video. Sorry, some folks are still in the other video. All right, so back to the question all right so someone just asked prior to me um getting distracted sheila cushionberry how often do you change your needle you should change your needle with every project yes oregon needle is another brand schmitz singer uh oregon uh store brand i mean there's many 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 different brands of needles out there and they all are regulated as far as the size is concerned okay so they can't just come up with their own size needle the all the needles the all the needles are pretty much uh the same they are the same they have to be the same they're regulated because remember size 90 slash 14 or 70 slash 11 all of that is the size of the shaft so you can't go different from that it's based on that size and it has to fit the machine so the needles are going to be the same and that's actually industrial equipment use the same sizes uh as the home equipment so that's not going to uh, make a difference a good universal thread for a beginner would be um you have Madeira, depending upon your cost, your price point. I actually go through Madeira threads myself personally, which is most of that thread back here. Um, up there towards the top is um, the Amazon um, thread place, I think. Oh, gosh. Right now I'm drawing blank of the name of the Amazon company. 
but that's up there and i use those yes we back sorry will that's why i was telling folks to jump over to the mobile i apologize hopefully i didn't lose any people unfortunately we went from 87 to now down to 43 but that's the downside to buffering with these computers and stuff um and showing graphics and stuff with my computer i got a lot of stuff on my computer so um i'm live on the other video some folks still are in the other chat <laughs> sorry so let's recap let's recap because i want to make sure y'all get this i want to make sure it's clear clear as a bell because when i heard it i was like that makes all the sense in the world that makes all the sense in the world okay why are needles breaking? Needles break because they get bound up. Why are they getting bound up? They're getting bound because the wrong size thread is being used in the wrong needle. Okay? So, let's recap. Your needle sizes. You have 70 needle size. 80, 90, and 100. Right? So when you see 70 slash 11, when you see 90 slash 14, um, those numbers, basically all it is, is telling you the size of the diameter of the shaft of the needle. Leave out from here. And sorry. Other video so your 70 your 80 your 90 your 100 that is your shaft size of the needle all right the eye size of the needle is bigger which is what you want you want your thread to have room to move around and do everything that it's supposed to do the eye the bigger the eye for embroidery the better all right so the biggest eye is in the metallic or the top stitch needle. Major all professionals, I have, well, let me rephrase that. The most, most of the professional sewers, and whether it be embroidery or sewing machines or um, serger machines, they use a top stitch needle because the eye is bigger and it gives the thread more room to move around in that needle and helps keep that thread from getting bound up. All right, because the eye is bigger. Also, with embroidery, we're using 40 weight thread. The weight of the thread, the higher the weight, the thinner the thread. Okay, so the smaller the needle you'll need. So if you're using 60 weight thread, which is little teeny fine thin thread then you use your 75 or 70 size needle okay if you are using 40 weight which is the majority all that thread up there is 40 weight every bit of it okay with the exception of what you can't see behind the embroidery machine what's behind the embroidery machine is 60 weight so that thread i would use with the size 70 needle but the rest of that thread up there is 40 weight you would use that with your size 90 needle. All right. So if you're doing onesies, if you're doing t-shirts, jersey knit, any type of knit fabric, you want to use a ballpoint needle. All right. But if you're using 40 weight thread, which is what we as embroiderers primarily use, 40 weight thread is a size 90 needle. But jersey knit, you would use a 90 size 90 jersey knit rich needle. Um, ballpoint needle. It's all the same for the most part terminology, but it is a size 90 is what you want to use because the size of that needle and the channel going down to the eye is perfect. Perfect fit for that 40 weight thread. All right. Hi, Marge. Sorry about that. I saw a question. Can the wrong size needle cause the bobbin thread come up to the top of your project? That is more of a tension issue. All right. Um, that's more tension. 
the majority of the issues that you'll have with the wrong size needle is shredding thread, breaking thread, thread getting bound up and stuff like that. That's the majority of that type of issue, okay? Um, the thread coming to the top generally is tension. That's a tension issue in most instances, all right? Um, let me make sure there was some... Oh, somebody asked about the titanium needles or they mentioned the titanium there is no titanium needle all right it is titanium coated it's coated with titanium nitride what that titanium nitride does is it it coats the needle with like a ceramic type coating titanium nitride and it it allows the needles to last longer all right should you use titanium coated needles I mean, the price is not too much different. Um, it will allow your needles to last longer. So instead of changing your needles with every project, it could allow you to change your needles with every third project. You know, so it allows the needles to last longer. But what I have found or what I found and also what was explained to me is when you start having it, issues with your embroidery you're embroidering along just fine and then you rehoop something or you start with the next project and you haven't changed your needle and you're starting to have issues change your needle nine times out of ten you just need a new needle it could have gotten bent or it's gotten worn or something anything uh so switch out your needles for the most part they're fairly inexpensive you can buy needles in bulk all right so it will help you switch out so in your sewing box for your embroidery machine the needles that you want to have is a jersey knit needle or stretch needle size 90 or ballpoint needle size 90 if you're going to be doing t-shirts or onesies that's what you want to have all right jersey knit stretchy any type knit fabric you want your stretch or ballpoint or um jersey knit needle is what they'll be called they're all pretty much the same thing but you want size 90 with your 40 weight thread if you commonly use 60 weight thread for whatever reason for little teeny fonts or something like that then drop down to a size 70 needle if you're doing it on a knit knit jersey knit ballpoint stretch needle if you're doing regular fabric then you will use your size 70 or 75 size needle for 60 weight thread. If you're using your embroidery on just regular fabric and you're using your 40 weight thread, regular needle, top stitch needle or metallic needle. Either way, doesn't matter. It's a size 90 needle and you want the metallic or top stitch, which is basically the same thing because the eye is bigger and it allows your thread to work its magic with all those beautiful designs that you're stitching out on your project. All right, so you can also have a size 100 needle in your arsenal. That would be for your thicker threads, your more decorative threads. Like for instance, um, some of your um, freestanding lace is called Battenberg or something to that effect. That uses a little bit thicker of a thread. That's what your 100 weight needle is for. Or if you're embroidering on denim, like dense, thick fabric. Not like your towel because the towel is still kind of soft and fluffy. It's still kind of soft. It is thick and it has some density to it. But a towel gives, you know, when the needle is up and down going through it, the towel kind of flexes out of the way. Whereas denim, denim is just there. It's not going anywhere. Kind of like leather is just is there. And you're not going to be able to, you know, move that around as much. It's not as flexible or pliable. It's not soft. So you can use your 100 size 100 needle with that particular fabric. But that's also used for your thicker, more decorative threads. A larger needle will make a larger hole in your fabric, which is also the reason why it should be used with denim. Now your size 90, if that's what you're referring to, that won't make that big of a difference because if I were to take this size 70 
needle out of the package and put it beside besides 90 you would not be able to tell the difference between the two you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to tell the difference you really would so as far as putting a hole in your fabric uh, if you're concerned about a hole being put in the fabric, then nine times out of ten, you're using something like a really lightweight fabric like uh, silk or uh, something like really thin and sheer. Then that's when you want to use your size 70 needle or denim, not denim, uh, jersey knit or t-shirts or onesies. You want to be concerned about holes in that but generally people end up with holes in that fabric because they're not using the jersey knit or stretch needle that's what's causing the problem there so you don't have to worry about that if you're using the jersey knit ballpoint needle because uh even the bigger needle with that rounded point all it's doing is pushing the fibers out of the way so it's not it, that needle is not made to cut through the fabric and tear holes in your fabric so you shouldn't have to worry about holes with that. A typical cotton pillowcase, size 90. Because the size of the needle that you're using is going to be made for the size of your thread. The needle is supposed to match your thread more so than your fabric, all right? The first thing you wanna do is match your needle to your thread, all right? Because if you're sewing on something like silk or really delicate fabric you you may not be you may not want to use a 40 weight that's kind of a heavy thread to use in fabric that's that delicate if you really stop and think about it all right um let me make sure that that is not everything um yeah that's that's pretty much it you want that thread to fit in the groove on that needle do these needles apply to just embroidery needle? Nope, this applies to sewing machines too. Sewing machines as well. It's based on your thickness of your thread. Now, granted, now this brings me to a whole nother subject with your sewing thread. You want to keep in mind the, the weight of your sewing thread as well. And I really don't sew enough to know how to tell the weight other than I know monofilament or that thin filament sewing thread is way thinner than regular sewing thread, cotton sewing thread. So I would use a uh, thinner needle, the 70 or, you know, the size 70 needle for the monofilament. Um, but probably bump up to maybe, because your embroidery thread is kind of thick. Uh, not embroidery. Sewing thread is kind of thick. Kind of put me in the mind of embroidery. So I don't see why a 90 wouldn't work. I have stitched with the size 90 without any issues ballpoint needle for a onesie yes because okay if it's stretchy if it's knit see your onesies and regular t-shirts or like this dress that i have on um if you go like i, I know we're getting into a completely different subject this is an old navy dress and if you look it up it's going to tell you it's a jersey knit dress that's that's the type uh terminology you want to look for so stretchy jersey knitted fabric any type of knitted fabric you need to not use a sharp needle it has to be a ballpoint needle ballpoint jersey needle stretch needle they're the same thing they're the same thing as the the thing is that that point is rounded that is what you want to look for for onesies or t-shirts uh, for underwear, for those that were putting the squirrels on the underwear, jersey knit. The men's underwear is stretchy, so you want to use a ballpoint needle. Um, mono, monopoly is either 7 or 0.4, very thin, loosen the tension. Uh, so if it's very thin, then you want to use your size 70 needle. That's But your top stitch needle. See, that's where I want to make sure you guys are understanding we're talking about sizes on your needles, but for embroidery, we also need to be discussing the eye of the needle. The bigger the eye, the better and more, less problems rather you'll have with your embroidery. The bigger eye is in the top stitch, which all, most of the professionals use, the majority of professionals 
use your top stitch needle whether that's in sewing or whether that's embroidery or even some quilting they use the top stitch needle because the eye is bigger your top stitch needle comes in same size as your universal needle as your embroidery needle all of that the the difference with the universal and the embroidery and the top stitch is the eye gets progressively bigger the universal the eye is too small it's it's it can work and you can use it and you have used it but nine times out of ten you've been having problems right so switch to your top stitch needle because the eye is wider and that allows that thread to dance along and stitch out that embroidery like nobody's business <laughs> so switch switch yes okay so monopod invisible thread yes you want to use the thinner uh shank on your needle and like miss jane says run a test you know uh i had been for since i started doing embroidery since i started i was using the 75 slash 11 needle for everything sharp uh sharp or embroidery i was using it for everything and i wasn't really having too many issues i was having issues but not too many not anything that would make me think oh that might have been the needle until somebody was kind enough right miss dark smith you've seen her in here many times before she was kind enough to send me for free it's a free dvd but i found it even on youtube it's on youtube i will be linking it to thread uh it's called doc thread therapy with dr bob that video will also not only teach you about needles, but it also teaches you about threads because his company, they make their own thread. So he's trying to explain to folks how to get the best use out of thread. And it starts with your needle. It, it starts with the needle. You have to have a good needle to run the thread. Otherwise, you're not going to get any uh, good sewing or embroidery. Okay, so this that's where this information is coming from this isn't me just saying something because i want to say it it's tried and true it's proven this is from the top authority that these folks make their own thread they also are partnered with organ which is one of the top needle manufacturers um that is out there in uh overseas in japan i believe um but that's what this is all about and if you take the time to watch that video not a problem it's on youtube just look up dr bob thread therapy and this exact same information that i'm giving you he's giving it to that's where i got it from and i felt like uh since i didn't know anything about it maybe you guys didn't know anything about it either so why not share that information you know it could save you guys headaches because i have had zero issues with thread breakage since I switched needles. Zero issues with thread breakage. All right. So we'll go back, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, you guys, I appreciate you uh, coming in and listening. Puckering generally is, as we'll mention, improper stabilization. That is generally correct. Uh, it could also be tension too high, but in most instances, your stabilizer is either too tight or it's too loose which is crazy with hooping and whatnot that's a whole nother stuff <laughs> that's a whole nother subject um do these okay i just mentioned that um 60 or 90 weight thread in the bobbin whoo 90 weight is small 60 weight even for sewing Okay, so if you're using 60 weight on a regular basis, then you want to use your size 75, 70, 75 needle. Um, let me make sure needle bar screw stays parallel to the side. Putting a foot on uh, allows the needle bar to push it forward to the, okay. So of course you want to be sure that your needles are installed properly. That's first and foremost. I mean, cause it's not gonna, um it's going to cause more problems if it's not so miss mars that is absolutely correct um oh rhonda welcome cv cw sorry rhonda thank you for making it <laughs> um 
Let me see. Wow, we've been doing good covering the questions. That's what's up. Um, are some brands of needles, Miss Glam Glam asked, are some brands of needles better than others? <sighs> That's a difficult question. All right, so I know Oregon makes an excellent needle. I also know Schmitz is a well-known needle and I haven't had issues out of their needles either. There may be some no-name brand type needles out there. I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, because there's one in a yellow case and I don't even know who makes that. Um, but ultimately, between Oregon, myself personally, and Schmitz, that's what I've used and haven't had any issues out of them. Um, so I would say give one or the other a shot and see how it goes for you as far as how, but see, this is the thing. We're, we're supposed to be switching out our needles so frequently that you would really wouldn't have time for it to wear out in one embroidery project, technically. Uh, so for that instance, I would say any either one of those brands should be just fine. Um, even on small 4x4 project, Sheila Cushionberry asked, yes, that is correct. Uh, because again, the needle size 90 slash 14 is not because of the project you're working on. It's because of your thread size that you're using. If you're using 40 weight, which is pretty much most embroidery thread, then you want to be using your size 90 needle. All right. Charlotte Villa. Hello from Alabama. Thank you for being here. Um, Okay, yep, we, we pretty much got caught up. All right, sweet. So let me go right here. Little Miss Boutique. I have a headache too, dear. Yes, very much so. Yes, please check that video out. I'm telling y'all, please. That is... Okay, so on YouTube, the video is broken up. I had the DVD, so I was able to watch it all the way through the whole hour. It's one hour uh, in a few minutes, but... And I don't like to watch movies. I, I'm not really a fan of watching a lot of videos and stuff. And when I first got the DVD, no lie, I was like, oh man, this is about thread. This is going to be so boring. I had the most fun watching that one hour video that I've had in a long time watching something. Okay, that's an excellent video. It is excellent. Kind of funny in a lot of places. Uh, Dr. Bob, Dr. Bob with Superior Threads uh, is the name of the company. And I'm sure you guys might have heard of Superior Threads because they do make their own thread. Um, that was an excellent video. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that video a lot. All right. So definitely go check that video out. This information that I'm giving to you guys is not me saying this. This is a professional where they make their own thread. They work joint with Oregon, which is a needle manufacturer, and they convinced Oregon to make a top stitch size 90 thread, right? So, yes, you, you definitely want to use the 90 for your 40 weight thread. Lisa, switch my bobbin case to metal for bobbin breakage, and your singer, singer for tour costs the same. Your bobbin case um, I'm not sure about the Singer Futura machine. Um, I know my bobbin case is not metal. It's plastic. So I don't know if yours is front load or top load. Um, but either way, I'm glad it has helped with your breaks. Definitely. Um, yes, I did answer, Terry, I did answer the question about the bobbin thread showing up on the top. Could that be the needle? In most instances, Miss Terry, when you have bobbin thread coming up on the top of your embroidery, that is tension. Generally, in most instances, that is a tension issue. Either something is going on up top, the thread isn't coming, you know, like with my machine sitting right here. Usually, it's something wrong here. All right. So either the thread is getting caught on something back here or it's going to jump off of track here 
or the tension is too high. Usually it's tension, your tension here that you can adjust um, and you can uh, digitally adjust it with the 770. But usually when the bobbin thread, if there's a problem with something on the top, uh, wait a minute, I'm saying that wrong. Bobbin thread coming through the top so it's something in the bottom. Y'all mixing me up. <laughs> I'm mixing myself up. Um, let me say that because of a headache going on. So check your bobbin. Check down below. Check and make sure that uh, that bobbin case is cleaned out. Uh, make sure there's no loose threads down in there. Clean it out. Vacuum it out real good. Dust it out. Whatever you need to do. When you take that throat plate off and look down in there, make sure... And also, you should be oiling your machine on a regular basis as well. That's super important. A lot of people forget that. So if you're having bobbin thread showing through, start with your bobbin case. Make sure it's oiled. Uh, make sure there's no straight threads caught up in there, tangled up in there, and see if that does not help. All right? That's usually the issue with uh, bobbin showing up at the top. So again, for anyone that is March 60 or 90 weight in the bobbin of the brother machines or threw my machine out three times in a row, use 40 weight in the bobbin. Yeah, you can use 40 weight in the bobbin, 60 weight, doesn't matter. Bobbin isn't, your bobbin usually doesn't cause very many problems. Hi, Karen Walker, how are you? Uh, had a lot of problems with Singer needles. Then that's the thing, you kind of have to use your brands of needles to see which one lasts for you but in a lot of instances we're using needles way longer than we're supposed to so you really should be changing needles out more frequently um and karen walker that answers the question you just mentioned or just asked i didn't see it um your needles should be changed out with every embroidery project or every eight hours if you're counting versus hours all right technically we all cheat but technically every embroidery project it should change hi terry samples how are you you're welcome miss paula hey marilyn ray um rain yes you can watch that superior threads video online they do have a YouTube channel superior threads they mainly do deal with uh, quilting uh, a lot of the stuff they got but quilting and embroidery in a lot of instances go hand in hand so that's why there's embroidery information on there as well as far as what to do with embroidery okay um oh <laughs> mama Mary that's funny um all right, caught me live hour late. Oh, hey, girlfriend, I was talking about you earlier. I was telling folks that I'm not the best of friends because I'm always busy and don't ever really have time to talk much. So I was telling them that you're so understanding and loving anyway. <laughs> um, Someone online told me that my machine can only use a certain brand of needles because it's been timed for these. Mama Mary, if your uh, manufacturer is telling you to use a certain brand, use a certain brand. I'm not going to tell you to switch to a different brand. Um, so whatever brand needles it is, they still should have the exact same measurements as all these other needles because it's universal across the board. So you should look for a top stitch or metallic needle with a larger eye. And if you're using 40 weight embroidery thread, it needs to be a 90 needle, size 90. Um, if you're using a, a lighter weight thread, then you can then use your size 75 or 70 needle. Um, let her know that she needs to use the correct size spool cap to keep the thread from tangling around the thread holder. If you use your spool cap, that does help. Um, also, some people use thread nets. Um, to help as well. That's the little mesh net that goes around the embroidery thread cone or spool um, to keep your thread from tangling as it comes off of your embroidery uh, or your thread spool. So uh, you can use a thread cap if you have the sideways loading uh, like this machine does where it's the thread is laid to the side. So technically, I need to have a thread uh, or a spool cap on there. 
and I don't. But technically, I should have one. <laughs> um, let's see. Use only 60 weight bobbin thread in the bobbin did by a second case to use with 40 weight thread. See, so if you, I mean, you want to use, you want to follow what your machine is telling you to do. All right, definitely. Manufacturer's book will tell you what size, um, what weight thread you're supposed to be using in your bobbin and in your machine. Um, and it will tell you the type of needle you should be using. But generally, it does not say you have to use one size needle because they know there's different sizes for different projects. All right, but I'm just letting you know generically for the most part with your embroidery projects, if it's not knit fabric, it should be a top stitch or metallic needle size 90 all right but if you're using jersey knit which is stretchy it needs to be a ballpoint needle but size 90 because you're using 40 weight thread still that's just the bottom line pretty much that's it you don't really need to know or use anything else unless you commonly use a thinner thread if you use a thinner thread then and it's not a knit fabric then use your size 70 with that project if it's a knit thread use your size 70 but ballpoint or jersey knit needle you see it's very simple but the the channel on that needle is made to accommodate a certain size of thread just think about it you got the little kitty slides that go for your little two and three year olds that's not made for my big behind. It's not. You know, I can go to a universal playground like I did today. That slide, I can fit on. I can slide down that side because that slide was made. That channel on that slide was made for a larger side to accommodate the larger kids. Right? But that little two and three year old slide is not made for big people. So they're not going to you're not going to slide on that like you're supposed to. Matter of fact, you're probably going to fall off of it. It's the same principle with these needles. The channel in that needle is made to accommodate a certain size thread, a certain weight. It's just, I mean, and it makes all the sense in the world if you really stop and think about it. It makes a lot of sense. So if you use the size channel, which is the wider, the size 90, and the wider needle, that top stitch needle, and a size 90 for the channel for that 40 weight thread you should not have any major shred thread treading issues thread breakage none of that you shouldn't be having issues and if you think about it if you're if you're using okay common sense right say i use a smaller needle with my 40 weight thread all right so my thread is all squished out and not nestled and and tucked up in that channel so it's all out and bolt so it's getting caught and rubbed friction on the fabric as it's going up and down so the fabric is pulling at my thread because the thread isn't hidden back up in that needle so it's pulling at the thread and bunching it up and shredding that thread and getting it all caught up well eventually once that thread gets bound and caught up what's gonna happen it's going to either break the thread or it's going to break the needle. All right. So if you're constantly having needle breaks, you're using the wrong size needle for that project. Think about it. Just think about it. It, it really makes sense. If you stop and you're like, you know what? That does make sense. You know, because your thread isn't hidden. That channel is to protect that thread. That's what that channel, that groove in that needle, that's what it's for. Is to protect that thread as it goes down and through the eye of the needle. So if it's not completely encased, if the thread isn't completely encased in that needle, then it's going to keep getting caught and bunched up and, and rubbed against and friction in the fabric. And eventually it's going to shred and it's going to break. That's, I mean, now this isn't me. This isn't my knowledge. This is folks that did all the research they needed to do to find out how to allow people to have the best results from using thread all right so i appreciate you guys for listening to me 
Um, and like I said, it's the, uh, <laughs> she said, tell the truth, truth and shame the devil. That's funny. <laughs> well, I appreciate being the bestest friend. We've been friends for far too long, but I have been busy and, um, it's difficult to get through to somebody. Karen Walker, I'm new to this embroidery. How often should we oil our machine? Do we have to use embroidery thread only? Name a few thread, top cost, and least expensive. All right, so oiling your machine, technically, you're supposed to oil your machine every single day. Every day. You're supposed to oil it. You're not supposed to oil like that. One drop, bloop, right there at your bobbin case. All right, especially your bobbin case. Once every week, you can oil some of these other points. And I have a video on this, right? It's out there, but it's for this particular machine. So there's points up here where you can oil your machine as well. Uh, several places, actually, that you should be putting a drop of oil at least once a week. But a lot of it depends on how often you're using your embroidery machine. So if you're only embroidering stuff once a week, well, I mean, you can get away with embroidering it just before your project and then stretch it out maybe every two weeks or oil and maintain your machine. But if you're using it every single day and you're doing multiple projects a day, you're going to have to oil it more frequently. The exact same situation with a car. Your car should get an oil change every 3,000 miles, right? Well, based on your manufacturer, but the old school cars was every 3,000 miles. Well, if you didn't drive 3,000 miles, you could put off getting your oil change right away, you know? So it was like 3,000 miles and I forget how many months. So likewise with your embroidery machine, the more you use it, the more you should maintain it. Now, as far as threads, um, there are several threads and you guys, I'm going to need your help with this one. Okay. Because again, my stash is majority Madeira. So what other threads do you guys, I know superior threads is one. Madeira is one. Floriani, if I'm not mistaken, is one. Um, there are several threads out there. Um, and the highest price point, ooh, you guys, is, it, is I think that's is one of the most expensive threads out there, I believe. Least expensive would be like that set of threads right there from off Amazon. Um, it's fairly inexpensive. I have not had issues out of it that remains to be debated by several people um but a lot of the problems could be the wrong size needle you don't know right so uh, but that amazon thread works great in my little four by four machines um p770 says to use 90 weight bobbin thread kim smith that's some heavyweight no that's some really really lightweight thread that's super thin thread to go in the bobbin so i mean if that's what the pe 770 manual says then i would say stick with that <laughs> um single needle machines both soaring blah, 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 blah. i'm trying to not exceed the carolina thread place time no because i'm not feeling my best <laughs> And I am not going four and a half hours. Sorry. And yes, there was a glitch. Not only personally there was a glitch because of not coming on at the right time, but uh, with the glitch on the computer. And I wanted to make sure that you got this information because I'm trying to tell you guys it was like light bulb moment after watching that video. And the needles is not the only light bulb moment, you guys. He has an excellent point in there about metallic threads. And it's hilarious because I made a video on metallic threads some months ago, if not a year and some ago. And as I was watching his video recently, when I got his a lot of the same explanations that I was giving in that video a year and some ago is the exact same way he explained it in his video. Right. So I was like, phew, I'm glad, you know, because a lot of it is common sense. A lot of it is common sense. So you can watch his video um, because he gives a lot of really good information on metallic thread, on threads in general. He explains how threads are made, uh, what they consist of, the different brands, what type can you use cotton, can you use polyester. I mean, he goes into all of that. It's an excellent, excellent video. 
and uh, the needle part was the one that really floored me and I was like okay this really needs to be shared with everybody so that's why we chose to do that and you guys are welcome I really really appreciate that um so Madeira Floriani Sulky Sulky is another one well I should have known that I'm shamed Sulky is another one <laughs> Isocord, Robinson Anton, Coates and Clark is that's at Walmart. Um, are we only speaking on Brother Machines because mine doesn't take oil? We're not only speaking on Brother Machines, we're talking about all of them, but you ultimately, I'm glad you said that, ultimately refer to user user's manual. Sorry. <laughs> ultimately refer to your user's manual. Because my machine says I have to oil it every day. My machine does say that. It actually says it on the screen. So you, I have to oil mine, but your machine may not. It depends on the manufacturer and what they say. Um, Let's see. Robinson Anton Will says, Robinson Anton is the most expensive that he's come across. Okay, so there's uh, that one. Hawthorne or Superior Metro Embroidery and Thread Art are lower end. And I love them for embroidery sewing on, on my long arm machine. Miss Marge does quilting. So a lot of this information with needles and stuff should definitely hit home for her. Um, but Metro Embroidery and Thread Art. Thread Art. That's the name of that thread back there up at the top. Um, Kim Smith, mad because one of your Joannes was going out of business and I brought a lot of the Coats embroidery thread. Well, I mean, Coats and Clark does work. I mean, and honestly, it could have been your needle size. So try bumping up your needle to the 90 and see if that doesn't help with embroidering with the Coats and Clark thread. It might make a big difference. You never know. Um, build up your thread collection when Joannes has their 50% discount. So keep Coats and Clark and Gutterman. Oh, Gutterman too is another one. Um, now Joann's is an option. You also have Ganold. Ganold is sulky thread. Ganold.com. G U N O L D. G U N O L D. Ganold.com is another place you can purchase thread online. It's very affordable, and I'm talking about. Um, for instance, you can go to Joann's and you can buy, you know, thread this size and it could be five bucks or something ridiculous, which I found. Okay. And even half off is $2 and 50 cents. Well, I have a account with Madeira, right? Madeira Mart, I think is the name of the actual website where you can purchase and you create an account with Madeira Mart. $2.50 on sale at Joann's. And you're talking about this size, $2.50 with Madeira. This is 40 weight. And where is my Duflachi? I forget how many yards of this is. Shame, I should know. I can't remember. Will probably knows, but I don't remember. But at any rate, way more than that little teeny fool of stuff, right? And I get these for eight, eight bucks for my machine. So a lot of times, you know, if especially if you're doing this as a business, you don't want to stick with, you know, the store only because you could be spending way more than what you need to it's just thought so ganold i order online you can order sulky online um you can order um what did i say ganold madeira 